donne euh, maintenant la parole à la représentante de l'Afghanistan. Ambassador Raz. Thank you. Let me first thank France for convening today's virtual Security Council meeting on the situation in Afghanistan and for their able stewardship of the Council during the month of June. I also would like to extend a warm welcome to Ms. Zebra Lyon, the Special Representative of the Secretary General in Afghanistan, and share our appreciation for her briefing today to the Council. I also would like to thank Ms. Fateh Wali, the Executive, Executive Director of UNODC, for her informative presentation, and my dear sister, Ms. Sharzad Akbar the chairperson of the Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission, for her eloquent statement. It's always an honor to be among powerful women who stand at the helm of leadership and at the highest level of policy making. And also a proud moment to hear my fellow Afghan at the Council. Finally, my sincere gratitude to the Secretary General for his comprehensive report and his endless commitment to the cause of the new Afghanistan that we continue to build together. Madam President, the past few months have been challenging, not only for Afghanistan, but the world as a whole with COVID-19. In the face of the hardship that we have encountered, Afghanistan is emerging from this time with a strong spirit of unity, upheld by the recent political agreement signed between President Ghani and Dr. Abdullah in a national cohesion for peace. As we move forward, His Excellency President Ghani has outlined the vision for peace and reconstruction in Afghanistan centered on five foundational goals. First, achieving a sustainable long-term peace that will bring an end to war and violence in Afghanistan. Second, Afghanistan once again becoming the center of regional connectivity and transit. Third, building robust tools of governance that will be responsive to the changing humanitarian, security, and economic situation of the country, as well as to the critical tasks of state building and nation building. Fourth, a self-reliant Afghanistan with a strong economic and fiscal basis through the utilization of our immense natural resources. And finally, an independent, prosperous, peaceful, and sovereign democratic Afghanistan with a posture of multi-alignment in our foreign policy. These objectives are at the center of our national efforts for achieving a sustainable peace in a thriving Afghanistan. On these, allow me to share the following points. With regards to the peace process, as stated by President Ghani, this is an absolute priority for the government and people of Afghanistan. The government established High Council for Peace and National Reconciliation, which will lead the peace process under the leadership of Dr. Abdullah. The council will be formed by the chairman working in consultation with the president, political leaders, the speakers of the two houses of the National Assembly, the civil society, and the country's elite. This was the first milestone in reinforcing national unity, political stability, and for building national consensus. To strengthen and ensure the representation of all Afghans in the peace process, the Afghan government formed an inclusive negotiating team through extensive consultations with representatives of women, civil society, political parties, religious groups, and the government. Particularly, the meaningful participation of women at the negotiating table was seen as a paramount for the government. The women and youth in the country, and through this process, we have created a team that will truly represent the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan in the intra-Afghan negotiations. Among our priorities, the government strongly emphasizes the need to protect the constitutional rights of Afghan women in preserving the achievement of the past 19 years. On this, allow me to express my appreciation to the commitment and support expressed by the United Nations in international partners, including through the joint statement on women's inclusion in Afghan peace process issued on 4th June 2020 by Australia, Canada, Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, United Kingdom, the European Union, as well as the call from the Group of Friends of Women in Afghanistan on March 10th meeting here in New York under this agenda. 
which had the presence of various council members as part of this group of friends. The government has taken additional confidence building measures to create an environment conducive to the start of peace negotiations. In line with President Ghani's decree, the Afghan government has been working to responsibly release 5,000 Taliban prisoners, with around 3,813 of them re being released already in a show of strong commitment by the government for a lasting peace for all Afghans. On this, we call on Taliban to reciprocate and expedite the release of Afghan national defense and security forces that remain captured. The government further calls for the need for a significant reduction in violence as a confidence building measure to create a positive environment for the immediate start of intra-Afghan negotiations. The government welcomed the three-day ceasefire during Eid al-Fitr and responded to this important gesture by the Taliban through the announcement of the immediate release of 2,000 of the total 5,000 prisoners. Even though the violence has not stopped, the government remains confident that we can build on the recent Eid ceasefire and the momentum generated by these confidence building measures to continue to pave the way for a more def definite cease of hostilities. To ensure a sustainable peace, other than building a national consensus, strengthening regional and inter international consensus is also a crucial element in support of our peace process. The Afghan government attaches great importance to all efforts of the international and regional partners who work closely when we work closely with them in the bilateral and multilateral formats. To strengthen this agenda, His Excellency Foreign Minister Hanif Akmar has been constantly engaged with his regional and international counterparts. Recently, the government of Afghanistan, the United States and Uzbekistan had a virtual meeting discussing the political, security, economic and human development issues in Afghanistan. This was followed by the June 15th Afghanistan-Russia-US trilateral meeting, reiterating a strong commitment to the Afghan-owned and Afghan-led peace process. The meeting called for reduction in violence and the importance of regional and international cooperation as key to sustaining intra-Afghan negotiations and ultimately to the success of the peace process. Here, I would like to commend the efforts of the United States in the state of Qatar with the recent visit of the Special Envoy of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Qatar for Afghanistan to Kabul and the countries offered to host the first intra-Afghan negotiations. We're hoping for a prompt start of the talks, and we look forward to stressing the crucial issues of the preservation of women's constitutional rights in the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan that would serve as the center in a hub of trade, energy, and connectivity in the region. A democracy where every Afghan, regardless of their gender, age, ethnicity, language, or religion, see themselves being equally represented in the prosperous, peaceful, and stable Afghanistan. This is the end state for negotiation that the government and the people of Afghanistan strive for. Madam President, just like the rest of the world, Afghanistan has been deeply affected by the socio-economic uh, uh, economic effects of the COVID-19. The pandemic has exacerbated existing vulnerabilities and challenges emanating from conflict, poverty, and natural disaster. Despite the government's preventive and mitigated measures, including the adaptation of a response plan to address the economic consequences of COVID-19, the estimated number of those in need of humanitarian assistance has still increased from 9.4 million at the start of the year to 14 million, which in turn translates to 1.1 billion US dollars to provide life-saving assistance to 11.1 million people. This has been compounded by continued high level of violence throughout the country and its impact on vulnerable innocent civilians who are now also faced with the threat of the pandemic. To this end, I would like to once again call on the Taliban to hit the UN Secretary General's appeal for a global ceasefire and reiterate President Ghani's call for a humanitarian ceasefire to allow aid workers and assistance to reach to the vulnerable people in our country. We thank our friends and allies in the international community who, who have echoed this particular call. 
As we seek to alleviate the humanitarian concerns of the pandemic, the government of Afghanistan has also been thoroughly engaged in mitigating the economic consequences of COVID-19. The government is in contact with neighboring and regional countries to enhance economic cooperation, including trade and transit facilities, and particularly the cross-border movements of commercial and humanitarian goods, which are critical to ensure the accessibility of food, medicine, and other basic and essential items. Our sincere appreciation to the support of our regional and international partners in providing necessary equipment and response to COVID-19, and particularly highlighting the US, China, European Union, India, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, UAE, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, OIC, and also the United Nations for the launch of a global humanitarian response plan, which includes Afghanistan. Achieving self-reliance and sustainable economic development is the key objective for the Afghan government, and we stress our firm belief on how this can be realized through promoting regional cooperation and connectivity, adopting necessary reforms, fighting corruption, strengthening good governance, rule of law, and human rights. To this end, the upcoming pledging conference on Afghanistan is critical both to sustain and to sustain the shared achievements in supporting self-reliance based on mutual accountability for the remaining four countries' transformation decade, especially for the post-peace development, as well as in response to the humanitarian and economic impacts of COVID-19. I would like to take this opportunity and express our appreciation to Finland for hosting this conference and to the UN and our international partners for your continued commitment in support of Afghanistan's quest for stability and prosperity. The Afghan government is working on the identification of key development priorities and the revision of the Afghanistan National Peace and Development Framework to be presented to the donor partners. We are looking forward to the successful convening of the conference. Madam President, with regards to security, we have a high number of civilian casualties, including women and children, as a result of the increased level of violence and deliberate attacks by Taliban, Al-Qaeda, ISIL, and their affiliates on civilian targets and public institutions. According to the Secretary General's report on protection of civilians, Afghanistan had the largest record number of civilian casualties in 2019, which was strongly attributed to the violence inflicted on the population by anti-government forces. Unfortunately, despite the persistent call on the government of Afghanistan and the international community for a humanitarian ceasefire, the level of violence has been still high, especially during the month of Afghanistan. For instance, the attack in Kabul on the maternity ward, the attack on a funeral in Ningarhar, and the bombing of the bus killing 15 journalists were in human acts against humanity. Peace must bring an end to these heinous acts, and our children and women must live in safety and prosperity. Our position is very clear. We are determined to achieve a sustainable peace. But unless a ceasefire is in place, we cannot continue to build the national consensus among the public. The Taliban must understand that this is not only a call of the government, but also by the people of Afghanistan as a whole. In talking about the threat of these services, I also would like to highlight the threat posed by narcotics, particularly a source of financing for terrorist groups. The illicit economy poses a threat to the security, stability, the rule of law, and development in Afghanistan. Fighting the threat and disrupting its international networks require comprehensive We should develop regional and international cooperation on the basis common and shared responsibility. The government of Afghanistan will continue to play it through the implementation of our national action plan. And we call on our regional and international partners to work together with us in order to, post, to foster further cooperation to effectively defeat this threat. Madam President, achieving peace does not mean arriving of the journey that we all have in order to continue to build. Peace will allow us to continue to build.
build the foundation of the treasure. Peace is only the beginning of a long journey in building the founder of NASA. And you will work with us in this important field very critical. We encourage you to continue to play the campaign as our key development plans. Believing in the dynamic younger generation of Afghanistan, the men and women believe in our vibrant media and in our shared continuous journey towards peaceful, stable, democratic, and prosperous Afghanistan. I thank you. Je remercie la représentante de l'Afghanistan de son exposé et je donne maintenant la parole aux membres du conseil qui souhaitent faire une déclaration.